सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुली फ्लोटिंग इन हिज ब्राइट रेड बलून ओवर दनलिट मेडोज ऑफ फ्लोरिस इंजीनियर जॉन मरीज जोजेफ कुटेल लुक डाउन ऑन सोल्जर्स हैकिंग ईच अदर टू डेथ with their bayonets the battle ended with the triumph of french revolutionary arms over the combined houses of saxe coburg gotha hanover and the habsburgs few french generals though were inclined to share the credit with a twice the day surveillance missions conducted by le entrepreneur the world's first military observation balloon This ridiculous innovation would not even deserve to be mentioned if it hadn't been made out to be something important," grumbled Marshal Jean de Dussault. Last month, a People's Liberation Army surveillance balloon, which we now know was probably blown off course from its target in Guam by weather or operator error, was shot down after it traversed the continental United States and sparked off a bitter diplomatic row. For all the outrage though the spy balloon probably amounted to little two centuries after the entrepreneur's debut in 1794 every corner of the earth is under almost constant satellite surveillance eyeball to eyeball in outer space china russia and the united states are engaged in a high stakes no rules struggle for supremacy The spy balloon is just a very small part of the effort to dominate near earth space capable of observing an adversary but out of reach of its means of interception those means range from china's spy balloon program all the way up to robotic aircraft like the united states super secret x37b faced with similar risks a generation ago Russia and the United States signed a treaty to allow spy flights over each other's territory. That gave both superpowers the confidence they needed in the intentions and capabilities of the other. The Open Skies Treaty as it was known collapsed in 2020 after Russia blocked spy flights over the strategic enclave of Kaliningrad. But the time might have come many experts are saying to create norms that similarly regulate and even facilitate espionage from space low earth satellites orbiting at altitudes less than 1000 kilometers from our planet have been nudging up against each other in the darkness of space for over a decade experts matthew mothop and marco strikers have noted the major powers have all been seeking to maneuver surveillance satellites to within hundreds of meters of those of their adversaries obviously to spy on their capabilities and monitor the data the satellites send or receive future wars could see anti satellite missiles or even robotic grappling arms being used to disable enemy communications and surveillance The risks of accidents or mishaps involving satellites don't take much to imagine. Last summer, in an incredible and untold story, Chinese spy satellites Xi'an 1201 and Xi'an 1202 had to engage in evasive maneuvers to avoid close inspection by United States space surveillance satellite 270. Then, the Chinese satellites tried to turn the tables and eyeball satellite 270 in a real crisis this kind of maneuvering could easily lead to an accident and that accident could only too easily be mistaken for a first strike designed to blind an adversary from the second half of the 19th century the advantages of aerial surveillance had become evident to even the most conservative generals the use of cameras mounted on balloons kites even pigeons became routine The new science of photo interpretation 
provided armies with intelligence on everything from enemy trenches to artillery dispositions through the First World War. Lockheed's U-2 Dragon Lady, capable of flying at over 21,000 meters by pilots who were equipped with potassium cyanide suicide pills in case they were captured, represented the pinnacle of a century of development of air reconnaissance technology. First flown over Poland and East Germany in 1956, the U-2 sensors provided critical intelligence, among other things giving reason to question boastful Soviet claims about the size of its nuclear missile arsenal. Although the Soviet Union was aware of these U-2 spy flights, the country did not publicize the intrusions into its airspace, fearing embarrassment. Finally, on May 1, 1960, a Soviet SA-2 missile damaged a U-2 and forced its pilot to eject. The diplomatic crisis that ensued derailed President Dwight Eisenhower's hopes of de-escalating the Cold War. U-2 missions into Soviet airspace ended after that shootdown. But Eisenhower was aware that a new technology was already providing his country with even sharper eyes. Ten years after the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite and a demonstration of its long-distance missile capabilities, major nations had agreed on the principles governing the peaceful use of outer space. Sputnik and the many satellites that followed it established that space, unlike airspace, knew no territorial control. The treaty held that space, I quote, shall be free for exploration and use by all states. There was, however, no consensus, law scholar Joseph Sorogan has noted, on what exactly peaceful use meant. Eisenhower had offered the Soviet Union mutual open skies rights as early as 1955, a proposal that was flatly rejected by the Soviet Union. The new satellites, though, gave any power with the right resources a God's eye view of the world. From 1959, the US began launching its Keyhole satellite series, which carried film in capsules which was ejected over the Pacific after a four-day mission to be recovered by aircraft. The technology wasn't without its problems. One capsule accidentally ended up with a Venezuelan commercial photographer who attempted to ransom it to the highest bidder. The results were impressive though. A declassified history of the project tells us that images established that no Soviet ballistic missiles were emplaced for launch at critical facilities, for example. Even as late as 1960, though, experts were unconvinced satellites could ever substitute traditional aircraft-borne intelligence. Among the problems, one top-secret and now declassified report notes, was that reconnaissance images, and I quote, must be made up of a fantastically large number of bits of information, a number so large that there is not time enough to transmit all these bits of information from satellites to Earth. The KH-1 satellite series launched in 1976, though, solved that problem of sending back images in real time. Fitted with charge-coupled devices, or CCDs, the satellites could provide information even faster than the cameras on spy planes. The Soviet Union succeeded in launching a similar platform just six years later. For its part, China began launching its Fanhui Shi Weixing reconnaissance satellites in 1974. Few inhabitants of our planet today grasp the sheer scale of surveillance this technology has enabled. According to a European Union report published in 2001, the Echelon surveillance system, which is operated by the so-called Five Eyes Alliance of the United States, United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand and Canada, was vacuuming up gigantic volumes of electronic data using a global network of spy satellites, that data was then subjected to keyword searches or even searches for particular voices. The scale and sophistication of the technology have obviously increased enormously in the two decades since, experts say. Even though this kind of technology has raised concerns about its potential for abuse by nation-states, 
there is a good case to be made that it has made the global system much safer. The prospects of great powers being able to initiate wars by stealth or developing secret military capabilities has significantly diminished. Espionage technology from space allows nation states to insulate themselves against surprise and also the ability to make informed assessments during times of crisis. Lack of effective surveillance nation states have been discovering can be lethal. The Russian offensive in Ukraine, for example, has been significantly retarded because the country has just two optical reconnaissance satellites. Those satellites, moreover, have a resolution of just 50 centimeters per pixel against only 5 centimeters per pixel for United States systems. Even commercial satellite systems typically have resolutions of 10 to 15 centimeters per pixel. Even though China is investing in more sophisticated surveillance technologies with its new Gaofen series approaching the resolution of Western commercial satellites, the technology gap remains. That gap, Brian Whedon has noted, makes it tempting for China to make ever larger investments in counter space technology, that is, developing weapons which allow it to destroy the more sophisticated satellites of its adversaries in the event of a war. Failing to agree on the regulation of space, expert John Meeklin has observed, hurts the nations of nation states themselves and inexorably leads to weaponization. The world needs to start engaging to make sure the final frontier of humankind does not also become its final battleground. I'm Praveen Swami and I'm National Security Editor of The Print. Thank you for watching Security Code.